before we start this week's video, I'd like to ask you all to comment, like, and subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss a new video. We are very close to reaching 1,000 subscribers on this channel. Can we do that by the end of the year? I know we can. Thank you all again for watching, and enjoy the video. Welcome to Laptop Dojo, with the strikes come from the Viz, not from copyright bots, I'm Shifu Payne, and last time we talked about conditioning drills and ways to prepare our body for not only the impact of taking a punch, but also for bodily longevity. And I ended that video stating that we would be looking at the reason why this channel is called Animal Spirit to begin with which is what we're going to be talking about today. Let me put this in mind now, as this is not a straightforward lesson going forward. This is more of a think piece, or a point of reference. To fully talk about the idea behind this video, as well as the following videos going forward, I would like to briefly talk about my journey through martial arts on a personal level, and what led me to this conclusion. Beginning back in year one of my training, I started training in what is known as the five animal styles of Gong Fu, with those styles being tiger, leopard, crane, snake, and dragon. And the way that I was taught to think of these techniques was in the form of a spectrum, much like the electromagnetic spectrum that we learned about or pretended to learn about in science class, with it looking a little something like this. Looks very straightforward, right? Certainly it explains how each style relates to each other, but does it really break down the philosophies and intricacies of said styles? I found myself not connecting with it very well, tending to focus just on tiger style and not even touch snake style, as I thought it to be the complete opposite of what I was comfortable with. That's no good. I continued down this sort of direction for about another year or two, until I began to think about the philosophies of each of these styles, and how, really, they don't really come across in this sort of way of thinking. As well as if they could be compared to something more tangible, or something we more ordinarily see in everyday life. I mean, how often do you see a crane walking down the road? This sort of thought process coincided with my watching of Avatar The Last Airbender and becoming a major fan of it. I can't remember now if this was before or after. Let's say after, to not disguise how much of a thief I am. So, all of this led to a conclusion that took the form of this. We'll go into greater detail of this throughout these videos, but what I want to establish early is that this functions in much the same way as chakras. Chakras are a concept from Hindu and Buddhist philosophy that serves as a series of pools of energy throughout the body, each with a specific purpose. This energy travels up the body, traveling further towards the wider existence or the spiritual. Basically, the further up you go, the closer to an existential crisis you get. With that in mind, let's discuss what the tiger form is all about. The tiger form can be easily compared to fire, a high energy and intense art form. The tiger is a form of passion and drive, all momentum based and an emphasis on striking and offense rather than defense. For me personally, I think it therefore to Northern Shaolin. I won't deny that I was inspired to do so, but the only reason I stuck with it is because I felt as though it linked really well with the muscle memory and with the training I had already received. A good example of this is the form that we're going to look at now. But first, let's discuss the palm of the tiger form in what is known as the tiger claw. It's made by bringing the fingers back, tensing the palm therefore, and then curling the fingers and thumb forward. The tiger claw primarily uses the palm to strike, but it also uses the fingers to scratch at the softer areas, such as the eyes and throat. This is the palm that we'll be using for this form. Beginning at attention, we're going to step our right leg back to horse stance. Bringing palms out to the side, we then return back to attention, transferring then to a crescent kick, and then moving downwards into a crouched position, proceeding to then scratch at the ground twice. Reaching up from there, we're then stepping up and walking forwards, striking to the left and then to the right, and as we do so, proceeding to then go to crane stance and strike to the left. Jump and turn 180 degrees to horse stance, bringing both arms down to grapple, and then jump and turn 180 degrees to crane stance again and strike to the sides. Turning to the left, we're going to kick up with a split kick and then jump and strike down to the ground, then proceeding to back kick while striking forwards. We'll then turn 180 degrees and roll forward, crouch walking forwards three steps from there, and then jump and turn on the spot, landing in horse stance for greater balance. Then, outside kick to the left and tail kick, kicking with a roundhouse and then a hook kick, first using the right leg and then the left. 
Transitioning then to horse stance, we're going to strike to the same side using both palms in what is known as a cannon strike, and we'll do this twice. Turning then to crane stance, having both arms out with the left low while the right arm is high. Crouching from there and striking forwards, stepping forwards and strike to the left, finishing by turning to horse stance and with palms out to the sides, similar to what we began with. Finally, we'll go to attention. I'll repeat this form now at full speed. This form is not from traditional Northern Shaolin, but I do feel that it has enough similarities to feel comfortable with offering it as a piece of extra material. Referring back to the idea of chakras, each pool of energy, according to the philosophies, can be blocked or affected negatively by certain negative emotions, and this is very much true of here. I'm not saying about this in terms of energy or spirituality, I'm saying it more in terms of personal development. With that in mind, the tiger form serves as a form of passion, momentum, and purpose. And while these things are all great motivated people to do good things, it does carry with it a double-edged sword, that of pride and of hubris. It carries with it the danger of seeing oneself as better than your peers. You're more passionate than them, you work harder than them, you're more driven than them, and clearly better at this one thing than everyone else. So you must be the best, right? Wrong. You may be better at some things than others, but that does not make you the best. There is always someone out there who is better than you. It is always necessary to show humility, both in defeat and in victory. Sure, standing too close to a flame can get you burnt. But that flame also burns the candle. Next time, we'll be progressing further into the animal spirit wheel. But until then, thank you all for watching. And until next time, everyone, peace be with you.